This video will be a bit technical. I wouldn't recommend this unless you're a bit geeky. Back in the early 1980s, there was a digital audio format from Sony which allowed digital recording of CD quality audio onto videotape. This was usually Betamax because certain beta format machines were made with a special feature which improved the results in the case of tape defects. The format was commonly known as PCMF1 after the first decoder, I have one here, uh, but there were several other later models. The system would create a set of patterns on a video signal which could be recorded to tape and then played back, decoded and turned back into CD quality audio. Back in the early 1980s this was groundbreaking stuff and many of the recording studios used the format. Many well-known artists released music which used this digital audio format and it sometimes gets a mention on record labels. The format encodes audio using pulse code modulation, this is abbreviated PCM. I'll not go into too much detail about exactly how that works but there's plenty of information on Wikipedia. The PCMF1 format followed on from an earlier, much more expensive PCM format which used pneumatic tapes and we'll look at that on another video because I have the equipment for that too. Only one model of decoder for this PCMF1 format was built with a pure digital output which would allow for connecting to other digital audio equipment with a standard SPDIF interface which is still used today. That was the PCM601 ES but it's exceptionally rare. Much more popular was the original PCMF1 followed by the PCM701 and then the PCM501 ES models. None of these had an SPDIF output and clearly that would be a highly desirable upgrade. Back around 2002 there was an SPDIF output upgrade board which was sold in the UK and elsewhere. The UK version was sold by a business called Whistlewood who were no longer trading. I was recently able to obtain an old board of essentially the same design as the Whistlewood one though this particular board came from abroad. Using the Wayback Machine I was able to use the Whistlewood installation instructions to install this board on my PCM701 ES decoder to provide a SPDIF digital output. However, my particular board didn't work very well in that installation. There were problems around the phase lock loop stability, which would cause the audio output to break up and crackle at times, especially when the unit was warm. Sometimes the digital audio recorder that's connected to the SPDIF output would stop working, give a message such as DIN unlock, and uh, refuse to record anything. Uh, and this is caused by the phase lock loop jittering. So that's uh, a technical issue that we need to resolve. Now there is actually another technical problem which is uh, to do with the way the recordings are made. A lot of these digital recordings have something called pre-emphasis which is effectively a treble boost at the start and then at the end when playback is um, carried out uh, the treble is reduced again. It's called de-emphasis. Um, now of course if we were to take the pure digital output from the SPDIF output and play that on the computer uh, it would sound over bright with too much treble. Uh, so we need to find a way to apply that de-emphasis at the end and uh, we'll do that later on in the video, see how that works out. The wiring on the PCB has the first few connectors with every other one as ground. So pin 1 is ground, pin 3 and pin 5. Let's just confirm that that's true also on the IDC connector to the wiring inside the machine. This will confirm that I've got everything the right way round. So pin 1 And three, good. And then move over to five, good. So we have the header 
fundamentally wired up the right way around. All the other connections have already been checked. So when I install that here, we should be fully wired up. The real Whistlewood PCBs have a better quality socket here where you can't misalign the header. But this particular board comes from elsewhere and uh, doesn't have quite the same quality of components. Hopefully now we're ready to power up and test the unit on a real digital audio signal. Okay, we're about to go with our first uh, test of the uh, new, well not new, but refitted uh, SPDIF modification. So this one came out of the 701 into this 501 machine. The intention is that the SPDIF digital audio output will be fed into this Tascam DR100 Mark II. The Mark II is important because that uh, means it has a digital input. Now it'll be 44.1 kilobits per second sample rate, so I need to set that up here. Make sure that this is configured properly for that. Chord setting, that's correct. And in the menu, the menu on this for the digital input is hidden in the remote, which is just unhelpful. Digi in, okay. Power up the decoder. We've got this already connected to a beta SLC9. Press play on that. Hopefully we'll have some audio on here. So let's see if we have audio on here. I've tried to select record and DIN unlock. That's extremely bad. That means it's not getting a valid input. We have failed for some reason. Let's do some experiments and see if we can get this to work. I'm going to check through for any kind of mistake I might have made. I suspect a possible error somewhere. So uh, it appears that my testing wasn't thorough enough. I've dropped a huge clangor. The ground point for the wiring to the uh, board should have been the positive end of C333 on the 501 but I chose the negative end which is at minus 5 volts which means instead of having 5 volts across the ICs in the board I've had 10 volts for quite a few seconds so there's every possibility that I've blown up one or more ICs on that board but right now let's uh, correct it and see if I may by some wonderful chance have got away with it So I will now have 5 volts across the board, but what damage has been done? Pin 1 is ground, pin 7 should be plus 5 volts, 10, 9, 8, 7, 5 volts, good. <sighs> Any chance of the board having survived this error? Fairly unlikely.
empty and unlock. I think we've done it now. No luck. What I'm going to do is refit this board to the 701 decoder and see if it still works in there at all. I've refitted the board to the 701 having made the changes to the power supply connections that are necessary for that and I'm getting DIN unlock so I think we can say with reasonable confidence that I've blown the stuffing out of my SPDIF board though I suspect the phase lock loop chip is still working as badly as it ever did anyway but um, it looks like another IC or ICs have failed oh I've got music, I've got something it was a crackly mess which is typical of unlocked oh right okay maybe it didn't die let me experiment some more So I've been struggling with this um, PCM decoder modification for some time. What this does is give us an SPDIF output from a uh, PCM 701 or 501 ES or in fact a PCM F1 uh, decoder. Now you may be able to see here, it's hooked up here, that the locked light here <coughs> is flickering and it's telling us that we don't have a solid PCM lock and if I uh, connect it up to a Betamax video recorder and provide a digital audio signal you may just about see on the oscilloscope that the output from the phase lock loop pin 4 is wandering around in time and the measurement on the frequency here is 5.5 to 5.7 megahertz if I um, blast some hot air from a hot air gun onto the, PCA, the PLL chip, it will uh, improve. And when that improves, it becomes stable and we can actually record the digital audio output from the uh, SPDIF output. Let's just do that. So now we have a hot air gun here, we're going to warm the phase lock loop chip slightly, so let's just uh, get you on there. The phase lock loop chip is a 74HCT4046. So I'm warming it, I'm going to be a little careful because of course this is very hot, and suddenly I will see stability on the oscilloscope from the phase lock loop chip output. Right, that looks nice now, that's solid, the light stopped flickering and now if I connect that up over here to a digital audio recorder we have a successful lock, good digital audio out but as that chip cools down you can hear crackling on there and eventually this will just say DIN unlock and stop. LED is starting to flicker on the board. I'm going to put that out of its misery. Awful noise. And we can see f instability on the temperature again. on the, the uh, Instability on the frequency on the oscilloscope. So I need to find a solution. Now one thing I have tried is a new phase lock loop chip. This is branded NXP which is effectively the same make as the original Philips one um, but it's worse in fact it won't even attempt to lock at all so we have to do some experiments on this board and I'm going to fiddle about with some different capacitors um, the timing capacitor here I've changed already uh, for some new ones because the original ones seem to be a bit uh, temperature dependent but uh, off camera I'm going to do some experiments to see if I can find any adjustment of resistors or capacitors 
that will give us um, stable output on the oscilloscope. Here's something that was recommended to me by someone who uh, has worked on these in the past. Add uh, some more capacitance to the decoupling for the phase lock loop chip, so I'll do that. I'm not sure that'll help, but uh, give it a whirl. Well, the LED seems to stop flickering. The frequency looks better on the oscilloscope. Hmm. Could it really have worked? Let's try on the digital audio recorder. It seems to be stable. Wow. But of course, we need to see if this is good over temperature, so uh, let's try some freezer. Bear with me. Good old Maplin freezer. Um, it'll be a bit difficult to buy any more of that. It went again. Frequencies become unstable and the digital audio recorder stopped. That said, that really is quite cold. Is that a fair test? It implies there may still be some more to do, but it certainly works better with that capacitor um, decoupling. I'm just going to leave that to warm up a little bit. It's unstable here, it's 5.5 to 5.7 megahertz output. We don't seem to have quite achieved the stability we were looking for. It's better though, I like it with that capacitor, but um, not a complete solution. Okay, a small change here. I've now fitted one of the new NXP uh, branded um, phase lock loop chips in here and I think we may have stability. That looks good, nice solid frequency and proper performance, proper working on the uh, digital audio recorder. Shall I try freezing this chip? I'm almost scared to do this. Now that very rapidly unlocked on the uh, digital audio recorder. Okay, so having uh, fixed the decoder board for use with the 701, let's install it in the 501. Last time I installed it in here, I made a wiring mistake um, in the uh, connector. At the other end of this connector, I was at the wrong end of a capacitor, which meant that the supply voltage was 10 volts instead of 5 volts. Fortunately, it seems not to have suffered. That was lucky. So uh, let's connect this up and see if we can get it working in the 501, which is my preferred machine.
OK, it's connected up, and we have the oscilloscope connected up to the phase lock loop pin, so we can confirm that that's steady. Right, power up the decoder. The phase lock loop looks excellent. Let's see if we get uh, an output. Analog output, fine. Let's try the uh, digital recorder over here. You see it for all my junk. Here's the moment of truth. Press record. That looks excellent. Right, I'll give that a soak test for a few hours. If that's good, then it stays in this machine because the 501, as well as being a lot lighter than the uh, 701, has one other feature, which is this OVC control, which you can use for fine tweaking the um, playback somehow. OK, trying to show in a little bit more detail what the problem is here. I have the phase lock loop output connected to the oscilloscope and we can see a 5.6 something megahertz frequency there which is uh, a, I believe it's a times four um, of an internal frequency coming from the decoder unit and it will vary very slightly depending on the contents of the tape this is playing a Betamax tape with this PCM digital audio now that's all fine, this is a nice stable frequency and if I ask my uh, digital recorder to record some of this signal, I'll just bring that over here, just about in shot. Um, oh, I've upset the uh, multimeter. I can ask that to record, and that's working fine. And there's no distortion on that. Now, everything's tickety-boo, you'd say, but the problem comes about when it gets a bit warmer. So. The best way to warm it up, I found this hair dryer. And what will happen, the frequency will jitter. You may just about be able to see that on the oscilloscope now, that the frequency is starting to jitter. So if we look here on the oscilloscope, it's bouncing around something awful. And if I try to do a sample recording of this, it'll say DIN unlock and refuse to carry on. So it's temperature sensitive as anything. Now I've done various experiments with capacitors and I think I just might be getting somewhere. One thing I've done, the timing capacitor um, is between pin 6 and 7 of the phase lock loop and I added an 18 picofarad capacitor from one end of that to ground. If I make that capacitor any larger it makes this pulse shorter, but it does seem to improve stability. I think I'm getting somewhere with this. I'm going to add a capacitor to the other end of the, I forget which is, which is pin six or seven, but the other end um, I, of, of the timing capacitor to ground. And it will distort the waveform the other way but I think it'll stabilize it. So let's give that a whirl. Okay, now with this unit switched off, I'm going to try a capacitor on the other side of my timing capacitor. So this is the 18 picofarad to ground I added previously. I'm going to add, um, well, I'm going to select 100 picofarad from the other end of the timing capacitor to ground. And I believe that will distort the waveform in an advantageous way but the real key is whether the uh, digital audio recorder will work on it and whether it will work over temperature. So let's give this a go. Well, it's hardly Lewis Rossman, but uh, that's soldered in reasonably tidily. So uh, let's put everything back together and see if this now works reliably. OK, I've just reconnected the oscilloscope. I'll uh, start up the Betamax tape and also power up the uh, decoder. Well, the waveform looks stable. 
reasonably stable. Let's see if we can record that. That's okay. Let's try heating it up. Well, that seems to be a fail. Did unlock huge jitter. So, done something wrong. Let's uh, see what went wrong this time. Well, that was a soldering fail. Um, I'd lifted the pad on the bottom side of the board. So, I'm going to have to resolder this capacitor into a slightly different location. Um, actually, closer to the IC itself. So, I'll do that and hopefully we'll have a fix. Okay, so the oscilloscope's connected up, the IC's fitted, the new capacitor's installed. Tape is playing. So this has changed the waveform. The mark space ratio is slightly different. The lower part of the waveform is shorter. But it does seem a lot more stable. So let's see if we can record that. Yes, that's happy. Right, now here's the real key thing. If I heat this up with a hairdryer, what happens to the jitter? Well, strangely, the amplitude suddenly shifted downwards. I'm not sure what that was about. But the... Oh, that's very odd. I think that might be the connection on the oscilloscope. But the recorder is still working. And there's no jitter. That's taken me uh, two days to uh, engineer the solution. But I think we've finally got there. I'll leave this IC on that's got the heat sink. I'll do a little bit more heat testing. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we're there. Oh no, I've lost my tape. Where's my tape gone? Oh, you've got it. That's me the beta, Max. Thank you. You're welcome. Now this system is fully working and tested over temperature, let's demonstrate the PCM decoder and SPDIF output uh, option fully working. So what we have here is a Sony SLC9 video recorder, selected because it has a PCM switch at the back, and our test tape. This is connected uh, as a video signal to the PCM501ES decoder and though this has analog outputs we're now using the SPDIF digital output connected to the Tascam SSR250N and if we look on the menu on this you'll see that we're connected to the digital coaxial input. So now if we uh, select play on the tape we'll see the VU meters up here good strong tracking signal and we can start a recording on the SS250 SSR250N now this sounds like it's perfect but there is a problem though everything's working fine we have the emphasis indicator on this that means that this tape was recorded with effectively a treble boost. Now, normally it applies de-emphasis in the analog circuitry in here before you hear it. But since we've got a pure digital connection to the recorder, that de-emphasis has not been applied. So that's our next problem. How do we apply de-emphasis to a pure digital audio recording? on this. Most tapes are recorded with the emphasis enabled. A few CDs were recorded with it too in the early days. So it's quite a common system and the de-emphasis curve 
is well established. So we should be able to find the correct curve and do a, a de-emphasis uh, in the digital domain. Let's work on that. There are some web pages discussing how to apply de-emphasis to a digital audio file, but here's my favourite solution. The Audacity audio editing software has a forum and on here is a de-emphasis curve which is easy to apply within the software. It's called the Redbook de-emphasis curve and you insert some text into the eqcurves.xml file. You import your lossless WAV file from your digital audio recorder and then open Effect, Equalization and there you will now have the Redbook de-emphasis curve. Apply that and you will have just about as perfect a transfer of the original digital recording as it's possible to achieve. Doing it this way bypasses the uh, digital to analog converters of the PCM decoder along with its analog de-emphasis electronics. It also bypasses the analog connection to a modern digital audio recorder and the analog to uh, digital transfer process that goes on inside there. Uh, I hope you managed to gain something from the rather long and complicated video. It does show a little bit of how uh, reverse engineering can solve a defect which was doubtlessly uh, in the circuit from new. Uh, but I wasn't afraid to show you a couple of mistakes I made along the way. Um, I've ordered a new set of ICs for my SPDIF board since they might have been stressed by the overvoltage condition they suffered at one point. I'm also hoping to obtain another defective board shortly, which I will then fit into the uh, PCM701 ES once uh, I get that working. So I could do a short video about that too, if there's any interest from you guys. Uh, please like, uh, and share and subscribe. It will help me to make more videos on this channel uh, about various work on old audio and video equipment. Bye for now. Please subscribe. This YouTube channel really needs it.